Now, I'm sure that you have had moments in your learning where you have felt like you progress very quickly. It comes easily, you're motivated, it's fun. But at some point, you hit a wall and you feel like you'll never speak fluently, confidently, and naturally. You are not alone. This feeling of being stuck is often called the intermediate plateau. And I've been there. It can be a comfortable place. You can speak and understand in many situations. But for most of us, it's not enough. We want to enjoy the language as freely as we do our mother tongue. As a native, I've never had the experience of learning English as a second language. So I wanted to bring you an expert who has successfully navigated this challenge of breaking out of the intermediate plateau without ever living in or even traveling to an English speaking country. So I'm excited to introduce you to Chiago, who works with me here at Real Life English. I greatly admire what Chiago has been able to achieve in terms of an effortless use of the language that is rare to find. Chiago is going to share with you exactly how he got to where he is today. My hope is that by hearing his story, you will not only gain motivation for your own journey, but also advice on how you too can achieve mastery. Take it away, Tiago. Thank you, Ethan. And hey, everybody, I'm super excited to be here today. Like Ethan said, we work together here at Real Life English. And if you listen to our podcast, chances are you have already heard me on there. But today I'm here to tell a little bit of my story and how I went from speaking zero English to the level of English I have today. I'm just like you. I'm an English learner myself, and I had to learn English from scratch in my country here in Brazil. I've never been abroad, so I'm going to tell you how I did it, and hopefully that's going to give you some ideas and inspiration for your English journey. But before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell down below because every week we put out videos to help you speak English with confidence and naturally. So now let's get started. So my story with English began when I was 15 years old. And as I told you, I come from Brazil. And at that time, I knew zero English. You know, I couldn't speak anything. I couldn't read. I couldn't write. But um, at 15, something magical kind of happened because I started to have this desire to become bilingual. I don't know exactly why that was, but the idea of using two languages to communicate, to express myself, was very attractive to me. And I remember also that I looked around me, you know, I saw my family, my friends, you know, my social circle, and I realized that no one knew English. So I started to associate also the idea of knowing English with having a better life or having more opportunities for my life. So I started to develop this feeling of wanting to learn the language. Right. And at that time, I couldn't articulate it as well as today. But today, with a little more experience, I can tell you that I guess that feeling that I felt was me trying to transcend my reality at that time. I wanted something different for myself. I wanted something better. So I saw English as the vehicle for that. But there was a problem because my parents couldn't pay for an English course for myself, you know? So I actually had to learn English on my own. So I decided to take on the responsibility to learn this language by myself because there was no other way. But I had a friend who actually studied at a language school. He took an English course and he was really helpful because I talked to him and he was kind enough to lend me his old course books, you know, because every semester, his school would change the books. So the books that he wouldn't use anymore, he will lend them to me. So that's how I started. I started by studying with old course books from my friend and a grammar book that he had lent me. And then I started studying by myself with those old books, you know? And I remember that I was really fascinated because English was always interesting to me. I always loved the language, but I was then actively studying it, right? I mean, I was reading stuff in English. I was copying stuff from the book that I saw. And I was already very excited because I was using another language to write or to communicate or to express myself. Uh, my speaking was really bad at that time, you know, so I couldn't speak yet. Even though I grew up kind of watching movies with my parents in English and listening to music in English as well, I didn't have my speaking skills so developed yet. I remember that I would try to read uh, stuff out loud from the books that I was studying with. And it was a disaster because, you know, the words wouldn't flow. I had no idea how to pronounce certain words. For example, low, la, do, you know, it was really bad and frustrating, but I kept going because at the end of the day, I was having fun. You know, I loved the language. I loved learning about the language. So I was enjoying myself. 
And also, I was very curious about the language, yeah? So, you know, that's what kept me going in those days. And at that time, that was when I had my first realization that English, especially the pronunciation of English, was very different from my own language, my Portuguese native language. So I told myself that I was going to have to be open and flexible to learn this language because everything would be different. The sounds of the words, the pronunciation, how the words were used. So I had to tell myself that it was important to keep an open mind and flexible attitude when learning English. And that was all I did for pretty much three years, you know, from 15 to 18. Most of the time I would study with books. And that was the first mistake I made. And I'm here to tell you this because I took way too much time, too long to start speaking. You don't want to do that. And at that time, 20 years ago, it was much more difficult to find people to practice my speaking with. So I just studied with books at that time. But nowadays we have so many more cool resources, you know, like apps. And thinking of apps, I can tell you about the Real Life English app, as you probably know. And with the app, you can have conversations with people from all around the world at the touch of a button. Plus, you can listen to our podcast there and with the transcripts. It's just amazing. So if you haven't downloaded the app yet, make sure you do that because, you know, that is one of the resources that, for example, I wish I had when I was learning English and trying to improve my speaking 20 years ago. But then something magical happened in my life when I turned 18. I started working. And I have to say that my work experience, you know, the jobs that I've had in my life, they were crucial in my English development, especially the speaking and the listening skills. Let me explain. My first job was at a drugstore and I worked as a cashier there. But there was something interesting about that drugstore because that drugstore was located in a rich neighborhood in Sao Paulo, you know, the city where I'm from. And because it was a very well-developed neighborhood, there were many hotels around that drugstore, which means that it was common for us to receive customers who were foreigners, you know, people who were traveling or visiting Sao Paulo and who were staying in the hotels nearby. That was when I started to put my English to use. You know, all those years that I spent studying, now it was the moment that I started to actually speak with people, you know? And it, it was funny because I would still take my grammar book and my books to the drugstore and uh, my colleagues, you know, my peers, they would see me at lunchtime kind of eating and studying at the same time. So pretty quickly I became the English guy at the drugstore. So every time a foreign customer came in, I was the one to be called, hey child, there's a, there's a, a foreign person there, a foreign customer, go help that person. And then I would go there and then speak in English with those people and trying to help them out, right? I remember one time it was kind of funny, you know, I was at the cash register and I was talking to this American customer, she was a lady, and then, you know, I was trying to talk to her in English and explain to her that I had never been abroad and everything, but I was still learning the language. And then I said, oh yeah, I've never been abroad. And then she kind of stopped me and then she said, oh, I think you mean abroad. And then I was like, oh, abroad. Oh, thank you very much for the correction. I appreciate that. So that was uh, one example yeah, of how having these little interactions with these customers helped me because, you know, sometimes I would say something wrong, like abroad, and then the, the person would help me by correcting me. And I had many of these small interactions at that time that were really useful. And this is another tip that I can give you. Be open to correction because if somebody corrects your English or your pronunciation or the way you use a word, this is actually great for you because the person is taking time to correct you and to help you. So be thankful for those corrections because that's how you improve. And then I got my second job. I got my second job at 19 years old and that was a very interesting job. It was a job as a bilingual customer service representative. I know it's a gigantic name, but basically the idea was this. There was this American company that provided cable TV services in the USA. Imagine an American customer who had a problem with the cable TV there. They would call us in Sao Paulo, in Brazil, for help, you know, because the company outsourced or hired us to provide that service. So that was a very nice experience for me because it meant speaking to Americans on the phone six hours a day, six days a week for a year. So that, in a way, it was my version of living abroad. You know, it was my version of having an exchange program because I was really speaking to natives 
for a year. Yeah, and that really helped me with my speaking skills and my listening skills. But it's important to mention that I only got that job because I already knew English enough to get that job. So all those years that I spent before, you know, working and studying and learning paid off because those years allow me to get this job. And then I improved even more. So here's what I have to say to you. Keep learning, keep developing yourself and start looking for job opportunities that allow you to use your English on a daily basis because then you're going to improve even more. And between those jobs, that was actually the moment when I really started to create my own immersion in English, you know, because I was already kind of using English on my daily routine there at work. And then I, I was really serious about it. Like, you know, everything I made sure that I did in English. So watching movies in English, series, listening to music. I love rock and roll, for example. So, you know, I always listen to my favorite bands in English. And with my very first paychecks, actually, that's what I did. We didn't have Netflix at that time or streaming services. So I actually would go to video stores and buy DVDs, you know, box sets of DVDs from my favorite series like Friends or, you know, Two and a Half Men, for example. And that was really cool because the DVDs allowed you to change the language. Right. I mean, you could change the subtitles to English. You could take out the subtitles because before that we had the VHS tapes and, you know, that wasn't possible. But nowadays with the streaming services we have, it's so much easier for you to access thousands of movies and series and watch them in English. Right. So we really have so many more resources nowadays. So movies and TV series, they were really important to me. I really leveraged the power of using that media to learn English. By the way, if you want to learn or to know my exact step-by-step -step process that I used to improve my English with movies and TV series, let us know in the comments. Maybe I can make another video in the future for you explaining how I did it, all right? Finally, there is one more thing that happened in my life that really helped me take my English to the next level. And that was becoming an English teacher. You know, I started teaching English at 21 years old, so it's been 14 or 15 years now already. And I have to say that teaching English and helping people with their English was actually an experience that really helped me master the English language to a whole nother level. Because, you know, when you teach, it's like you are learning again, you know, because if I have to teach a class or help someone, I have to prepare, right? I have to study the topic myself. I have to be familiar with the topic. I have to think of different ways to explain things, to give examples. And that mental process really helps me better understand the topic. So then I can explain that to my students. So it's a win-win. If you teach somebody, you win because you are kind of revising information and studying it again. And the other person is also benefiting because the person is learning new stuff with you. And I've had the pleasure of working with wonderful, more experienced teachers, you know, over the years. You know, people who were like 10, 20, 30 years more experienced than me and who were amazing speakers back in the day, much better than I was. And that helped me. For example, once I remember that I was, you know, in this teacher's meeting, right? We were having this teacher meeting at the school. And after the meeting, one of my fellow teachers, she was, I think, 20 years older and more experienced than me. She had been teaching for many years. She came to me and she said, hey, Thiago, do you mind if I correct you on something? And then I said, no, not at all. What is it? And then she said, you know, I noticed that during the meeting you said basic, but actually the S sound here sounds like an S, not like a Z. We don't say basic, we say basic. And then I was like, oh, really? That kind of, it was mind blowing to me. And then she went on to explain to me how usually nouns and adjectives with S, you pronounce the S as an S, right? As a S sound. And verbs with S usually are pronounced with a Z. So just to give an example, yeah, we have the adjective close. For example, I live close to work, right? And we have the verb close with a Z sound. So you close the door. And then I remember listening to that. And first, of course, I thanked her yeah, for the feedback and the correction. And then I think I spent, I don't know, uh, one or two months after that, just thinking about that sound, thinking about the latter S. And when does it sound like a Z? When does it sound like an S? So I made sure I spent time after that correction to really uh, incorporate that. Because remember, at that time, I already spoke English. You know, I had been speaking English for years, but still I was making this mistake. 
And she really helped me with that. So I spent the next couple months trying to break that habit of pronouncing basic, for example, and saying basic. And here I am, guys. I've been teaching English now for 15 years already. And after 15 years, nowadays, I have the pleasure of working with real life English and being here, you know, shooting this video for you and creating these lessons for you. So I'm very thankful for my journey. I think it was an amazing journey. And I hope that my story inspired you a little bit in your journey. And I hope also that you got some ideas and tips of things you can apply in your own English development, all right? And if you're looking to get even more inspired, check out this video that Ethan did explaining the number one reason why you should learn English. I'm sure you're gonna like it. Thank you so much for watching me and for listening to my story, and I'll talk to you soon. I'm Ethan, your Real Life English Fluency Coach, and in today's lesson, we're gonna go deep. I'm gonna try to give you some different motivations that maybe you haven't thought about in the past they're gonna help propel you forward in your English learning. So if you watch this video until the end, you're going to learn the powerful way to add purpose to your English learning so that you don't give up. You're going to learn why English is the most important language in the world and probably why it's one of the most important things that you can possibly learn.